There's no doubt that the controversial site Sci-Hub has become an integral part of research and finding research papers. So this is how you use it. The first thing you need is a research paper. So you don't start using Sci-Hub until you reach a bottleneck with what you can get open access. So for example, you would typically head over to something like Google Scholar and you could go in here and sort of search for whatever your research field is. I've just put organic photovoltaics and then you end up with this list. And you can see that typically in whatever search engine you're using. You've got uh, HTML, you've got PDF, PDF. This tells you that, uh, you know, the majority of the paper, if not all of the paper, is available to you. So you don't need to use it on something like this. But as you're scrolling through, you'll probably see some options here that don't have any PDF or HTML down the side. Ba -ba can access it or can you? That's where Sci-Hub comes into things. So if I wanna look here at this paper, I'll click into it and I can see it's by Wiley, it's Advanced Materials, which is a good paper. And uh, I want to look at the organic photovoltaics over three decades. So I'm uh, reading it, I'm reading it and then, oh, where's the paper? Maybe I can get the, the full text. Oh no, what? I have to spend money to access papers? Well, maybe you could use something else something that you're not actually meant to use, but everyone does. So definitely don't do this because it is very naughty and you'll get a very hard slap on the wrist. I'll come to your house myself and slap you on the wrist if you do what I'm about to show you. So what you'll notice is we reach these situations where we've reached the end of the line unless we're willing to spend money or we have access through our institution. Now, one thing I like to do is take the DOI. There's always a DOI. Even before we get to this page, I'll go back one, there's this DOI. And so that's interesting to me. And also I want to know the title of the paper. So those are the two bits of information that are important to take over to Sci-Hub. Now, if I'm going to Sci-Hub, I always access it by just going to Google and typing in Sci-Hub. I go to Sci-Hub and then it's this top one that I always go for. You're looking for Sci-Hub.se um, or whatever mirror is working at the time because you see this uh, website is so hated that big publishers with their billions of dollars of profit try to take it down all the time. Um, and the layout changes quite a lot. So don't be afraid of uh, the site if it looks dissimilar to how it looked last time. Don't worry. But ultimately, you always end up with this. It's a Sci-Hub and then you've got enter your reference. And in there, you can put things like the DOI and the title. So we'll try both to see if it works. Let's go over here. I'm interested in, where did it go? This one over here. And I'm gonna look at this DOI. So I'm gonna copy the link address, bonk, and I'm gonna take it over to Sci-Hub and I'm gonna put it in, bonk, and I'm just gonna click open, open. It's as easy as that. And now we let the um, servers find that paper for me. And here it is. I didn't have to spend all that money. How much did they bloody want for it? $15 for 48 hours access, not on my watch, thank you very much. I've got it for free. Now, you shouldn't be doing this. They hate this so much, and I'm not sure what the legalities are of it. But look, so many people are using this. 125,624 people in the last hour. Those criminals stealing from those big publishers. So, this is what you definitely shouldn't do because you're stealing money directly from the pockets of the uh, CEOs of those companies. How dare you? Sci-Hub was actually founded by this absolute hero of the scientific world, in my opinion, which is Alexandra Elbakian. And this person is behind this website. There she is waving. Sometimes she ends up just waving for hours and hours because I love looking at her and her like, sort of like, well... What are you gonna do to stop me kind of face? Because this has been going on for so many years and they can't take her down. I'm just so, so sort of amazed that it continues to exist. You can find out more about Alexandra. Um, here's a biography and uh, I'm just amazed that she's been able to keep this going. And I think that uh, this part, you know, the communism, the current system producing knowledge is a classical example of failed capitalist system. So this is all about making sure that uh, intellectual property and knowledge belongs to people and not just people with money. So I think this is such an awesome tool that you sh definitely shouldn't ever use. Look, she's got photos. Look at these cool photos. I haven't seen these before. What a champion. All right, that's it, I'm done, I'm done. Um, you can use other options, which we'll talk about in this video, but those are the steps that you can use to actually find research articles for free. There are a few other ones that you need to know about 
this is them. Another tool you should consider using is this, annasarchive.org, and it's got this bit, SciDB, the Sci database, because it says here SciHub has paused uploading of new papers. So if we go back to SciHub, you can see that we've got access to 88 million papers, or more than that, but with Anna's Archive, we've got 97 million papers. So that is a thing where Anna's Archive is now sort of like further ahead. So if it's a newer paper, I would consider going over to Anna's archive to see if you can find it there first, rather than Sci-Hub. We've also got this one, and by the way, this is how you use it, you just put the DOI here. So here we are, we put the DOI and we click open, and we end up with the similar sort of layout as um, Sci-Hub, and you get the PDF here. As with the other one, you can go up here and download it or print it out, so these buttons here. And then, uh, yeah, this is the information you can get it, so that's really good. We've also got Sci-Hub and DOI.org, other sort of places you could potentially find this paper. And then we've got these other options as well. We've got the directory of open access journals. Now, this is only useful if your paper you're searching for is in open access. You should be able to find it anyway without having to use Sci-Hub and that sort of stuff. Archive is a place I love to go. This is quite often really up to date, really sort of like um, leading edge research that hasn't quite yet been fully peer reviewed, but it's in the process of being peer reviewed. You can read people's comments, and say, it's really great. You'll be surprised what's there. Um, and the last thing is unpaywar.com gives you open access to over 50 million free scholarly articles. They harvest open access content from over 50,000 publishers and repositories and make it easy to find, track, and use. So you go and you get the extension, you click here, and then you add it, and you end up with this little kind of like lock. If you go to a page where there's um, like, a paper that you may want to download. If it's available for you, you get this little icon here, and then it says, unfortunately, Unpaywall couldn't find any legal open access version of this article. And it's that legal aspect that really sort of like Sci-Hub gets around. So definitely don't use it because it's illegal, but if you do use it, that's how you use it. Perfect. <laughs> If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about my up-to-date techniques for using Google Scholar. I think you'll love it.